Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to use your Ledger Stacks device with your phone. We'll get it connected to the Ledger Live app and get it synced up and paired. I'll show you how to do a few transfers in and out using Ledger Live, and then I'll show you how to pair up your Stacks device with a third party wallet called Rabby so that you can do some trading on a decentralized exchange. So let's jump in. All right, so we're going to use the Bluetooth capabilities of the stacks for interacting with our phone. I already have the Ledger Live app, but if you don't have the app, you can just go over to the Apple Store right, and get that uh, app downloaded. This is the official icon. Make sure that you're getting the uh, official Ledger Live app. All right, so you can see that I've already got mine set up. Uh, most of you that are using stacks are uh, existing Ledger users, but it's pretty much the same even if you were starting from scratch. Uh, you would go down to the My Ledger section, and what we want to do is pair up a new device. So I'm going to get my stacks out. I invite you to check out my first look video on how to initialize the stacks and get it set up. Unfortunately, you will need to connect your stacks to a computer to get the software updated. You cannot do that through the phone. All right, so we'll go ahead and wake our device up. All right, and you can see that I already have some apps on there, but uh, after we pair it up, I'll go ahead and show you how you uh, would download a new app if, you're, uh, if you need that. So in the My Ledger section, just go to Add New, and we'll uh, say we want to set up a new device. Uh, we'll choose Stacks. And uh, it sees my stacks uh, because uh, the stacks Bluetooth is enabled by default. If you don't see your stacks, you might need to go in to your phone's Bluetooth settings. Make sure Bluetooth is on on your phone as well. We'll choose Ledger Stacks, and then it's going to do that initial pairing. So you're going to see a number on your stacks, and you'll see a number on your phone. Just eyeball it and make sure they match. Uh, we'll say yes, it matches, and then I'll hit pair on the phone. All right, and there you go. Let's pair it up. We do need to allow access, so we'll tap that. And most of these just kind of walk you through this stuff, and some of the stuff I covered on my um, first look video, which I'll have linked um, up in the corner and down below. So, but let's go over to the My Ledger section. And uh, you can see I already have some apps on here, but let's say you wanted to add a new one, like for example, Cardano. I'll just hit the plus there on Cardano. All right, and you can see the app installing on your device. Pretty straightforward. And you can also see the progress over on your phone that, uh, progress bar there that goes in a circle. All right, and then you'll see that the app is installed successfully. We can go to accounts, but if we wanted to add a Cardano account, we could just go down here and add an account. And it'll ask me to open the app on my device. All right, so you can see I have an existing account in there already. That's why it's dim. And it gives me the option of adding a new empty one. I won't do that today, but you all you would have to do would be to hit continue to uh, start that brand new empty account. All right, so now that we've got all of the apps on there that we want, let's go ahead and do a fund. So I'll go down to Bitcoin here, and then I will choose an account. And in order to fund it, I will do a receive. And uh, this is the verification step. We, it's best practice to do this to make sure the device is synced up to the account properly. So I'll hit verify. All right, it's going to ask me to open the Bitcoin app. All right, and you'll see the address on your phone and then on the stacks it will say Ver verify address. You can just tap here. It'll show you that address, just eyeball it, make sure it's the same one, and then hit confirm. 
Right, and then that just tells you that th this account is synced up to your device properly. We'll copy that address, right? That's like uh, our home address. If you want someone to send you a check in the mail or a letter or whatever, you need to give out your address, right? Same thing with a crypto wallet. You need to tell uh, the sender where to send the crypto. Well, in today's case, I'm just going to uh, get some crypto out of my Coinbase account and send it to my wallet. So I'll just go over here to portfolio. Uh, you can see I have a little Bitcoin in my account. I'll choose withdraw. And then I will allow the paste and uh, paste in that address from my clipboard. All right, that's the address of my uh, ledger stacks. All right, I'll go ahead and send it all. If you're doing this for the first time, please do small test transactions. Don't try to send thousands and thousands of dollars worth of crypto on your first try, right? Always do a small test. Uh, there is going to be a blockchain fee there of 352. I'm willing to absorb that. You can usually find lower blockchain fees when you um, try to do your transfers late at night or early in the morning, any kind of off peak hour, right? You'll have to experiment depending on which part of the world you're in. Let's hit send now. All right, I'm going to need my two factor. We'll just tap that, copy it into our clipboard and paste it in here and off it goes. We'll hit done there. All right, and that Bitcoin is on its way to my stacks. You can see that's pending. I'll go back over onto the uh, Ledger Live app. All right, so it's gonna take a little bit for that Bitcoin to actually hit the wallet. We can come back to that. But I did want to show you how to go the opposite direction. Uh, for Bitcoin, it would be send, and uh, we would just choose the account and send it back to an address. However, uh, I did pay about three bucks to transfer it from Coinbase, so I'm going to choose a cheaper crypto to do our uh, return to Coinbase. So we'll do Solana. I'll go into my Solana account, and I'm going to do a send, right? Same uh, screen that we got on the Bitcoin app, but we need an address. So uh, we'll go back over to Coinbase, and this time we'll say we want to make a deposit. We'll say we want to deposit crypto, All right? We're gonna choose Solana. And that's the Solana address of my Coinbase account. I'll copy that into my clipboard. We'll go back over to Ledger Live and I'll paste in that address there. All right, that account not funded is a normal warning that you get when you're uh, interacting with a, an exchange-based wallet. It can be safely ignored. We'll hit continue here. Uh, I'm not gonna send all my Solana. I'm just gonna do a quick test for you guys. I can afford to send a small amount uh, back and forth because the fees are negligible. We'll hit continue here. You can see my fee is so small it doesn't even register as a penny. We'll hit continue here. Now if your device has gone to sleep, you will need to wake it up. We'll hit open. So we're uh, transferring a small amount of Solana. Uh, in order to review, all we have to do is tap to continue. We'll tap. There's the amount, there's the address I'm sending to. You might wanna double check that with your Coinbase account. All right, we can eyeball that. All right, and then I'll tap to continue again. And now we hold to sign. All right, sending an outgoing transaction is so much easier on the ledger stacks, right? It's very intuitive, touch interface. All right, and then you should, uh, you should see a confirmation on your phone that the transaction went out. You can view the details on the blockchain or you can just close out. All right, you'll see that you had some Solana go out. All right, you can see in uh, Ledger Live that that uh, small amount of Solana is on its way out. All right, and then we can see there that that Bitcoin came in, the Bitcoin that we transferred over from Coinbase just came in. It's not completely confirmed on the blockchain yet, but uh, we've confirmed that it has hit the wallet. 
So it's safe and sound in the wallet. We just can't spend it yet. All right, so I showed you uh, how to uh, fund your wallet using the stacks. I showed you how to uh, sign an outgoing transaction using the stacks with Ledger Live. Let's play around with some third-party wallets. So I'm going to download the Rabi wallet. All right, and there it is. You want to make sure you get the Rabi wallet with that uh, icon there, purple with a bunny on there. We'll go ahead and get that downloaded to our phone. All right, we'll say get started. Uh, now they give us a whole bunch of options here to uh, sync up to any existing wallets that we have. We're going to choose Ledger here at the top. We'll choose next. And we'll say allow. We need to make sure on the stacks that were in the Ethereum app. See, it mentions right here, keep Ethereum app open and select the ledger. So we'll hit Ethereum, we'll make sure it's open, and then we'll connect here from Rabi. And uh, it has imported one address for me. I'm going to import more than one because I know I have more than one on my stacks, right? going to import this one so we'll have some uh, funds to play around with All right I'll hit confirm All right and we can rename this if we want I'll just call this one main that's my name for it I'm just connecting to existing wallets that I've already set up in my ledger right if you're doing this for the first time it might just be uh, they might just be empty, right? You'll need to fund them just like I showed you in the previous step from an exchange or however you wish to fund your wallet. All right, and then we can switch between uh, the two wallets. All right. So uh, I would like to fund this wallet with some uh, US dollar coin. Now, Rabi Wallet uh, can handle... Uh, Ethereum chain, base chain, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon chain, uh, Arbitrum chain. So it uh, can handle a lot of different chains. Uh, but I would like to show you how to do a little swap on the base chain, which is where I think Rabi really shines. Uh, you'll notice that I have some Binance Smart Chain tokens. There's a little icon down there for Binance Smart Chain. The uh, base chain to uh, icon is that little blue circle, right? So uh, let's receive some crypto into this account on our base chain. There's our address. We'll copy it into the clipboard. We'll go back over to Coinbase and... Uh, Back at the home screen, we'll say we want to do a transfer. We're going to withdraw crypto. And I have some US dollar coin up here. I'll tap US dollar coin. And I want to use the base chain, right? I wanted to use the, uh, I want to transfer it into my base wallet. I'll go ahead and allow the paste there. And that's uh, the address that I got from Rabi, right? But it's the exact same address of my um, Stacks device, right? Uh, I'll just do 40, and then I'll hit Preview. And you can see I've got everything lined up there. I've got the address of my wallet, which I can manage using Rabi. I've got my network set to base, and it's not gonna take very long. We'll hit Send. And I'll, I'll need my two-factor again. All right, let's get that uh, code from the authenticator. Tap Coinbase, go back over, and then I'll paste that code in to complete that withdrawal. All right, and then we're done. Now that one should uh, go pretty quick. Uh, by the way, you'll notice that that Sol came in that I transferred that 0.1 Sol is now available in my Coinbase account. So uh, transfers are all complete. Let's go check Rabi now. We can uh, just pull this down and you can see that my balance went up by about 40. And if we scroll down here, you can see that I have that US dollar coin in base format here in the wallet. 
right? So I'd like to make a little trade for you guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and trade for this little meme coin that I've got here. Um, I think this is called um, Brett's Cat, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there we go. Brett's Cat. All right. That's the contract address. So we can even use that contract address. So if we want to trade our US dollar coin uh, on base, we'll choose US dollar coin. And then over here, we'll paste in that contract address. And there it is. Uh, B-A-L-T is BALT. All right, and I'm just going to use that 40 that I transferred a minute ago. I'll want to wake my device up here. By the way, if you would rather that your device didn't go all to sleep all the time, I'll show you how to disable that. Uh, all we have to do uh, to disable that uh, sleep functionality is hit this uh, little uh, gear in the bottom right. We'll go to lock screen and we'll go to auto lock and we'll tell it that we don't want it to go to sleep. Okay. Okay. So once again, we'll need to be in the Ethereum app. And here's where it's really fun to use the um, stacks. So I'm going to go ahead and do this trade. I'll hit get quotes. All right, my best deal is on Paraswap for this trade. We'll hit Paraswap. It's brand new, so I need to enable it. Let's handle that. Let's go to enable it. And then uh, let's say we want to enable one inch, zero X, and Paraswap. All right, these are centralized exchanges. I'm not going to use those at the moment, right? All right, so now that we've got that one enabled, let me show you what happens on the stacks. It's going to be the fun part. We'll hit uh, best. We'll say swap via Paraswap. The first thing we'll need to do is authorize. All right, it seems that uh, one inch has the best deal. We'll hit uh, one inch. First thing we'll need to do is approve US dollar coin in there. So I'll hit approve. And then uh, it asks me to sign with the ledger. So I'll tap that. And then the ledger is asking me to approve this. We'll hit review. Blind signing is enabled. You have to enable blind signing to use these types of DEXs. There's the information about the swap. There's the network. And then to complete, I will hold and sign. All right, I've approved US dollar coin. Now I need to complete my trade. You can see that little spinning circle up in the top that was pending. All right, so you can see now that I have more Balt and less US dollar coin. I did have to try that a couple of times. Um, I'm not claiming this process is perfect, uh, but it does work, right? And when you're trading on base, even if you lose gas fees on a failed transaction, it doesn't really matter because the trading fees are negligible like around a penny or so. So not a big deal when we have failed transactions. All right, so I showed you how to get your device connected to your phone using the Ledger Live app. I showed you how to do a few transfers, and then I showed you how to connect to the Rabi wallet using Bluetooth so that you could trade on some decentralized exchanges. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments, and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click. That will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.